Hey everybody, Rob here. It's time for a new Pro Revenge story. There is no fury like a disabled man scorned, or how I got schooled on how to terrorize a waitress. Let's jump right in. Hey, thank you for subscribing to the channel, and if you're not already, please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Now, a little bit of background first. I am lightly on the disabled spectrum, as I have multiple sclerosis, but otherwise, I'm quite fine. I am 208 centimeters tall, and according to the girlfriend, built like a brick house. The friend in the story is small, kind of lanky, and looks like the front man from The Cure discovered heroin, and then opium, to treat his ADD and autism. And this would be putting it lightly. Now, I do enjoy the occasional prank, in and out of work, but I was humbled into thinking I was anything but a pure beginner. I get a call from a friend of mine that a colleague of his is coming to the city, and he wants someone along because, in his words, the guy he is meeting is a bloody genius, and he fears that he will not be able to keep up with him. Having nothing better to do, and knowing that it sometimes can be bad for autists like him to do the small talk, I agree to meet them for lunch at the train station. The guy we are meeting comes by train, and the first impression we get as the train stops is two train officials hauling the luggage out of the train, along with some hefty breathing and the clinking of crutches. Out steps what I can only identify as Jimmy. You know, like the South Park character, but dressed with a lot more style. Pleased as peaches and commanding the officials to help him off the train in the most majestic way I had ever seen. This guy, in comparison to me, is frail beyond belief. I have my shape because, when it gets bad in system administration and the customers are idiots, I tend to lift weights after work, as strangling the customers is frowned upon. My friend is the kind of thin Korean boyfriends of K-pop stars would pay to be, but he has a very unfortunate case of being physically awkward. The colleague would have not seemed out of place in videos of how they released the prisoners of war in Vietnam, and some of them were too weak to even walk. And while I am relatively well off, as my symptoms are not that visible, this guy is walking on two crutches and is bent all ways that are unholy and make other disabled people flinch, and he looks disabled as all hell. So it makes me flinch, as I feel guilty how often I complain about not being able to do certain things, but compared to him, I have a mild inconvenience. I maybe get slightly dizzy sometimes, he looks like a strong wind could shatter him over. But as soon as we start talking to him, and I introduce myself by offering him a fist bump, I thought I could possibly crush his hand if I shook it too hard, so I let him dictate the greeting, and he gave me a hearty fist pump back which was about as strong as two dehydrated mosquitoes. He lights up, and within five minutes we are knee deep in a discussion about astrophysics, relativity, computer programming, and politics, and I am desperately trying to realize where that came from. He warms up to me, assuming I must be the smarter of the two of us, not true. I am slightly less on the spectrum than my autistic friend is, and I have the hardest of time even following his jumps in logic, and have to scrape my university knowledge together, but if this was a character sheet and his stats were rolled for, the player must have spec'd him for mental stats. As dysfunctional as his body was, as brilliant was his mind. Threes across the board in physical, eight in charisma, but holy heck if there wasn't an 18 in intelligence and wisdom. You know the kind of pretty that makes you just gawk awkwardly? That kind of pretty can give you a warm smile and your day just lights up, and your heart stops a beat. Imagine someone that can do that with pure intelligence. I would not hesitate to call him one of the most brilliant people I have ever had the pleasure of meeting in my life, just from our conversations there. So, being too physically awkward to ask him what to do with his luggage, and not wanting to assume, I just grab it under one arm, as it really wasn't too much of a hassle, and we walk a bit to the restaurant. This guy is a waterfall, excited, bubbly, has a voice like an Oompa Loompa that was rejected because he would have been too unbelievable, but dear God, 
a brain that makes me scared. Instead of me awkwardly giving him the tour, here is some classical Bavarian architecture, wonderful examples. He comments as we walk slowly and is leading us, two natives, around as he has apparently memorized the tour book online and had some questions and we were the stumbling idiots that had to cover how little we actually knew or how slow our brains ticked. He tells me he appreciates the architecture and the design and in the restaurant maybe he has talked a bit too much and he needs to think a bit now so he will quiet down a bit. Would I just hold the doors open for him? Five minutes time jump and we are sitting in a typical Bavarian restaurant. Being used to strange people, I work IT as a sysadmin, and knowing how autistic and very smart people sometimes have a few difficulties speaking to each other and may need a translator, I just take the few bits of his hyper advanced theories that I have grasped and understood and explain them to my friend, who slowly warms up to the more intricate possibilities of what the theorem could mean when we get a waitress to the table. She is the overly pretty, but not very bright type. Imagine, if you will, a Tiffany. What you come up is roughly right. Light tan, even in February, manicured nails, extra pieces of flair, bleach blonde hair. Think the slightly bitchy girl in every bad romantic comedy that passively aggressively bullies the glasses wearing girl, and you have her. Hello and welcome, can I get your order? looks to me and friend. Me and friend order. Both of us are hungry. Order what is good from the menu. So, that is that. And what will he have? You could have heard a knife drop. I am scared to death as I figure I now have to keep a disabled person that I was afraid to fist bump from putting a fork in that waitress's eye. My friend looks mortified, but what worried me is this guy's face. I am usually very bad with facial expressions, so let me try to paint a mental picture. Imagine you talk with someone and you see their face moving, and it makes sounds, it has emotions and such, but suddenly it freezes. And what before was a human face does not change outwardly, but now it looks like an animatronic mask. It just seems like suddenly you have an idea that there is something utterly inhuman lurking under that surface. Think something from H.R. Geiger or a Mingo from Lovecraft's books. Something whose standards are so utterly alien that it puts on a mask to not draw attention and has mastered to operate that mask. But just for a second, you see it slip the controls before it notices that you noticed and it resumes operation watching you. And you know that it knows and suddenly you feel a tinge of fear. And on his face, is now the most trollish grin that I have ever seen, sending shivers down my spine. And suddenly, he even sounds disabled, but with a heavy slant of mental retardation. Like, if you told the most perfect imitator in the world, he should imitate the stereotypical slurring of someone with Down syndrome is supposed to have, but do it creepily well, he would be 10 centimeters below what this person did. I think you should order for me, because I am too disabled. His tone has changed. What before maybe a bit sounded like an Oompa Loompa, now sounds horrifically disabled. That is the only way I can describe it. To the lady, I am sorry, but that's how my mommy made me. Horrified. I didn't mean it this way, um... His eyes meet mine, and despite my barrier of understanding, I can see that he is planning something, and he is giving me an up and down, as if to continue, and he just needs five minutes. Her eyes meet mine, and I can see she is dying of embarrassment. Well, alright then, I think he will have a... As I scramble to figure out what angle he is playing at, I list a few local specialties, and a nice soft drink, and a local beer afterwards. Does this sound good? That sounds super yummy! And he flails his arms excitedly, accidentally swiping the salt shaker off the table. He looks at the shaker, at the beet red lady, and goes, Oops, in the most smug tone I have ever heard. Butterfingers! As he starts to fumble for his crutches, shakling and looking awkward as hell. Not really, it's alright. She bends down to take the salt shaker back up, and he shoots us a clear and direct look of utter... I have this right where I want it. 
and even my slightly autistic friend gets it. We stare in wonder and admire the scene unfolding. From that moment on, he is the stereotypically disabled, fussy eater, accident-prone person ever. He drives that poor girl like a coach driver with the coldest, most professional harassment attitude I can see. All pretense of conversation with him is gone as he shoots down any attempt to get his mind off the issue and to steer him away from making that girl's life a living hell. And quite frankly, at this point, I am in awe of the train wreck unfolding. Mind you, if I would even try half the things he did, I would have been tossed out in a heartbeat. But he somehow knows exactly how far he can go before she would say anything. He catches the girl's rhythm, waiting precisely for the time when she is doing something else nearby, before he does something loud and noisy and summons her in a volume that was audible in the entire restaurant, making her nearly jump by the end. A few examples. To get her attention, he threw a salt shaker at her back, half across the room, hitting her squarely. He brazenly used his assumed mental disability to, when we order dessert, go, and I want a side order of your boobies. His food was of course too hot, too cold, or not spicy enough, and it had to go back to the kitchen, which he made his favorite waitress do, with a smile. He would of course accidentally fling his fork, knife, or anything else down just to make her jump. Nothing that could break, but just something that would make a lot of noise as a precursor of going, Miss Waitress, I have dropped. By the end, this poor girl was a bundle of nerves, where you could literally see that she was dreading every interaction. Loud noises seemed to scare her, as she reacts as if the colleague had physically whipped her into obedience. We had finished our meal and go to pay, and what do you know, she suddenly has to mop up something as far away from us, so another server takes our table. I want to give a big tip for the inconvenience and pay for this master class in trolling and pro revenge when I noticed a banknote has just materialized in my money as I just shifted a bit to put my wallet back. Again, purely over eye contact, he seems to nod as if to say, this is for my part of the meal and a tip. Well, did you enjoy your meal? Sounding very chipper and loud enough that even the kitchen could have heard it, I very much enjoy this. This is now my favorite restaurant. I will be back here every day. And then, if you had told me, and then the light behind her eyes went out, or you could see her destroyed soul leaving her body, I would have called you a hack of a writer with the sense of a poet. But I swear, as we walked by, him excitedly waving, my friend in utter shock and awe, a la Dave Chappelle's, I didn't know you could do that, bit, me carrying the suitcase, we walked past a person who had lost her will to live, who had been shattered so completely that the world had turned grey for her, who was broken and expected the world to only contain horrible disabled little men. We went outside in silence and walked. As we were walking, I witnessed a transformation that I had only once before seen in The Usual Suspects. You know the scene where Kaiser Soze walks back out of the police station and drops all of his disguise and you realize it was just an act. Imagine that, but with a gradient of disability. Over the next few meters, he gradually jumped down several grades in disability. His crutch walk became more stable. He no longer shook awkwardly. I am a role-playing DM on occasion and I have to correct myself. This was not the charisma that makes you want to have sex with someone or think someone was beautiful as this was come inliness. This was the pure and unbridled charisma of a masterful actor driven by pure and utter hatred of being assumed to be incompetent because of an accident at birth. As we stopped in front of the subway train station to have a last smoke, all I could ask this Hannibal Lecter on crutches was, why? No emotion, but a slight smile on his lips as he puffed his cigarette. She assumed I was mentally handicapped, so who was I to correct her? You shouldn't go with assumptions. Don't you do this too? How boring it must be to not enjoy people who make stupid assumptions like that. To this day, I stand in awe of just thinking about this. I sometimes get odd looks, 
when my sense of balance is a bit wonky, or when I have to use a cane, I get it. I would be a little bit weirded out too. It's normal, at least for me. I used to get pissy and think about ways of screwing with them. But now, I just smile, laugh it off, and act friendly. Because I have seen what waits for the people who make assumptions about disabled people. Sometimes, you get a big cuddly giant like me, who is of the opinion that everyone can have a bad day, and you shouldn't just lash out at other people because they most likely realize what buttholes they have been to you 15 minutes out. And sometimes, you get someone like said colleague who will take great pleasure in breaking you mentally. This was by far the best written pro-revenge story that I have seen probably in the whole time that I've been on Reddit. Thank you OP for the laughs, I really needed it today. I want to thank OP for posting this story to the pro-revenge subreddit. You can visit them at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again this is Rob from Karma Comment Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends. And we'll see you in the next one.